Serious. People who have survived a murder attempt by dumb luck. What's your story? My dad was a meth addict. He did lots of effed up things, dropping me off at trap houses to have sleepovers with other coke babies living in a house full of animal crap and hoarding. He sicked his pit bull on a black child. He was a real effing character. One night he came looking for my mom and I at our place. Mom wasn't there. Grandma was babysitting me. I was sleeping in bed when somebody started to try and open my window. It was locked, but they kept jamming something into the bottom to try and force it open. At the same time, I heard the living room door being tried by somebody else. My grandma snuck into my room in her nightgown, apparently woken up by the same thing, and told me to say nothing. Don't even whisper. We laid under my bed while a group of men shouted for my mom to come out, slammed their hands on the windows to try and break them, and jumped on my grandmother's car. She called the police and barely whispered into the phone. Eventually, the cops arrived and the men scattered. Long story short, my dad and his other meth-head friends came to the house with guns and knives with every intention to kill me and my mother because she was going to get custody of me. If my mom wasn't so vigilant with locks, we had three different kinds on the front and back doors, we would have died. My sister had this one friend when we were growing up I always got a bad vibe from. She would try to pick on my little brother, but I would always stop her. I was eight, she was ten. Once we were at a lake and all the kids were swimming. I swam out to the deep roped-off part, but I was still little and really shouldn't have. She kept acting weird and getting closer to me, making this weird laugh. She pushed me off the wooden pole in the water, and I got scared and started to swim back, but she came up behind me and pushed me under the water. It didn't click at first that she was trying to drown me, but after she aggressively pushed me under the third time, I had this crazy moment of clarity. It was like the world slowed down ever so briefly. I relaxed and let myself sink, swam underneath her, and came up behind her. I grabbed her hair and shoved her face into the water, keeping my legs on her back so her body couldn't rise. I waited until her struggling slowed down and let her come up. I waited in the water, saying nothing, bracing myself for her retaliation, but she just looked panicked and swam back to shore. I told my sister, who had already expressed that the girl was weird. We confronted her together, and she just looked really dazed. In a monotone voice, she said, I'm sorry, I didn't know it would be like that. It wasn't until I replayed those words in my mind later that I realized what she was saying was, Sorry I tried to drown you. It wasn't until I almost drowned myself that I realized how horrible it is to do to someone. My husband and I live above our place of business. Our alarm company called us at 3 a.m. to say there was a motion detect alert, just one, in a weird place. We assumed it was a mouse, but went to reset, check it out. Husband ended up face to face with a burglar who was on his way out the window he had broken. He ran back inside, I called 911, and we heard mad chaos going on in the depths of the building. So much crashing and smashing. Burglar monkey climbed a 10 foot iron gate, bodily smashed through two sets of commercial grade glass doors, and was outside again. My husband was like, Yeah, F this dude, tore after him and tackled him. He got him on the ground and pinned him. Bear in mind the whole time I'm narrating to 911 and chasing around in panties and tank top. I was a bit behind my husband in the middle of the street about 15 feet away when a minivan squealed around the corner. It was his GF slash getaway driver. I luckily missed it. I was super focused on reading the license plate, which was one of those cutesy font out of state ones and therefore hard to read. But she yelled, get the F off him or I'm running your B over. Then she tried to. The audio and video I had to watch for the trial was horrifying. I had blocked it out nearly completely and didn't remember how close it was. She guns the engine at me, I throw my hands up in front of my face when I realize what she's doing and scream and jump out of the way with inches to spare. He jumped in and off they went. He bled all over my husband, yikes, and eventually the DNA and the partial plate info nailed them. They're both in prison. Addendum. Trials suck. Serious. Three men drugged me and kidnapped me. I woke up on the floor with one of them tearing my clothes off and my moon boot broken foot. I tried kicking him off with the boot, but he started knocking my head into the floor and I passed out. I woke up in daylight in a garage bin, naked and in a pool of my own blood. I don't know how the F I got out of there or how I found the nearest policeman, but I then collapsed again. Woke up in a hospital with 52 stitches in my head and 78 in and around my vulva and breasts. Doctors said it was the worst R trauma she ever saw. They say it's a miracle I'm alive and don't know how I did it. They were never caught. I am a crisis trauma and PTSD counselor now. They didn't win.
I was out with a few friends, and with us was a girl that had just broken up with a psychopath. We didn't know he was a psychopath, we found out that night. We were just walking back home from a restaurant, it was about 1am, and the guy came running out of nowhere. I don't know how he knew where and when to meet us. He ran to the girl, lifted her shirt up, and stabbed her in the gut, literally spilling her belly open like a fish, and then ran off. This whole thing happened really quickly, so we were all in shock. The girl was holding her own intestines in her hands, and she was so shocked that she didn't even seem scared, wasn't screaming or anything. She just stood there. We called an ambulance, and they managed to somehow put everything back and sew her up. This happened about three years ago, and she still has pretty serious problems with her digestive tract, can't eat certain things and that kind of stuff. That image of her just standing in the middle of the pathway holding her own guts will remain stuck in my head forever. The guy got 13 years in jail, by the way. Serious. I had a guy high on both meth and acid break into my apartment in college. Somehow he was convinced he lost his glasses inside. I'm doing dishes when my door gets slammed open. Next thing I know, he is behind me. I'm being choked to death in my kitchen. As I was losing consciousness, I grabbed my roommate's acrylic bong and frantically swung over my shoulder into his face. The bong broke but did nothing as the guy was choking me even harder, so I swung it again. Because the bong broke the first time, I was hitting the guy with a six-inch claw of acrylic glass. Afterward, his scalp and part of his cheek were hanging off the side of his face. Essentially, I scalped him with a bong. So I chased the guy out of my house. There is easily two feet of snow outside. He tries walking back to his house through a cemetery as a shortcut. Seriously. And he passes out in the cemetery. The police only found him because I called the cops and they followed the blood and footprints through the snow. And that's the part I was surprised about the most. I hit the guy on his scalp. There isn't much blood in a scalp compared to most of the body. But my kitchen was covered in blood. His blood was on my refrigerator, counter, floor, and ceiling. It was almost as traumatic to clean it. My roommates were gone for winter break. Thank God my roommate's girlfriend came over and helped me. Now, as for the guy, the cops couldn't charge him for two days because he needed blood transfusions. He was charged with assault, breaking and entering, and attempted murder. Not sure what he got convicted of, but he went to jail for four years. I was exiting a bar once after last call and was with a friend who was a medic. We saw a girl laying in a snowbank near a telephone pole who had just been hit by a car. We ran over and tried to help her. Some others were already on the phone with 911, and I, not having any medical training, didn't have anything to contribute, but didn't want to just leave. The whole situation was concerning. I turned around for a second and start to hear people screaming. I turn around, and a minivan was heading for us, the few people around this woman. They already started to run, but I was too late. He hit me as I was trying to flee, put the car in reverse, ran over me again, and then went forward and run over me a third time. Turns out the guy was high and drunk and got into a fight with the woman's BF, whom I bared a strong resemblance to. He thought I was him. Not to throw a pity party for myself, but nine years later, I have a ton of medical issues, and my life pretty much started on a downward spiral since then. But sure, I guess I survived. I was 15 and outside in my garage petting my cat. It was November, so it was already dark by 5 p.m. Someone opened the door behind me without me hearing, grabbed me by my ponytail, and started dragging me outside. They hit me on my head with a brick and knocked me out, pulled me halfway around my house when, I'm guessing this is when, they stabbed me on the left side of my stomach. This must have brought me out of my daze because my mom said she heard me scream from inside where she and my brother and sister were in the kitchen. They came out the front door and saw me bleeding out on the sidewalk, called 911. Had 12 stitches, double layer, and a severe concussion and whiplash. Didn't eat and hardly slept for a week. They never found him. I got jumped by two grown men when I was a freshman in college. I was walking back from my friend's house and it was about 30 past midnight. One posed as a homeless man asking for a dollar and the other had on a security jacket like he worked for the university's safety patrol. When I passed the homeless guy saying I had nothing to give him, I saw the security guy walking towards me. This is when I felt a rear neck choke hold and the security guy started wailing on me. I had my bag on me, but like I said, I literally had nothing on me. They couldn't take me down to the ground. Surprisingly, I must have had an adrenaline rush. The guy posing as a homeless guy said, Open the backpack. Find anything. Let's dip. This lasted about two to three minutes, but it felt like forever. The whole time I could feel something pointing in my back, but I just like to think that the guy was extremely excited and it wasn't a knife. Luckily, it was right outside my friend's house and a couple of them came running out when they heard the commotion. 
The guys fled immediately when three of my friends came sprinting towards them. I still look behind me when I walk home alone. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.